Welcome to SDH's coverage of everything going on in the Premier League. It's another round of Prem and Proper here with only a handful of matches to go across the board. We'll go over the standings, go over the week that was, the midweek that was, and get you ready for the matches on the weekend. Obviously not everyone playing, but a lot of folks are, and it is getting right down to it. Matches are going to be made up this week and next, so... Uh, Prem and Proper might be pushed back toward this particular part of the week to let everything settle before the weekend happens. But obviously we'll keep you posted during the week on SDH as to everything that's going on in the Premier League. So let's go backward before we go forward, as we always do. And we'll go through all of the scores, standings, get you set up. Then we'll go through all of the news that has happened in the last couple of days. And we will get you squared away for the matches on the weekend so in the last seven days a lot we'll start you off last friday with arsenal and southampton and the the uh, 3-3 draw that happened back on the 21st arsenal had a lead for the third time in a row and they didn't keep it at a plus 619 so southampton got a vital point at the time and manchester city fans were cheering saturday the 22nd fulham 2-1 2-1 winners at home against Leeds. Liverpool, big win at home. Back and forth match with Nottingham Forest. Uh, tremendous fight from Forest in that one, but they lose it 3-2. Leicester, big full points for them as they beat Wolves by the score of 2-1 at the King Power. Crystal Palace and Ever- Everton, a goalless draw. Brentford and Villa, a 1-1 draw. Then the surprise of the week, back on the 23rd, Newcastle put six on Spurs, and that was it for Christian Stellini. Another uh, caretaker manager, Ryan Mason, has been put in place. So it's in a month, it's now three managers, 29 days, three managers. Ryan Mason, Christian Stellini, Antonio Conte. The other 9 o'clock match, West Ham, a big 4-0 win at the Vitality against Bournemouth at a plus 150 as they were a – as they were – a uh, road favorite, one of the rare instances for that to happen uh, this season. So that takes us to the action in the midweek, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Tuesday, Wolves, big win over Crystal Palace at a plus 135 at the Molyneux. Villa continues their charge in toward European football, a 1-0 win at home against Fulham. Leeds and Leicester, a spirited 1-1 draw at Elland Road at a plus 256. Then Wednesday, Forest, a big win at home against Brighton. 3-1 win at the city ground. Big points needed for Nottingham Forest. That got them out of the relegation zone, even if it was just by a point, and there's still some work they've got to do when it comes to goal difference. But a big win over Brighton. Final score at 3-1. Liverpool at West Ham winning 2-1. Brentford continuing Chelsea's woes with a 2-0 win at Chelsea at Stamford Bridge at a plus 387. Then Manchester City in complete and total control from the absolute beginning over Arsenal. One versus two, and number two at the Etihad came up big, winning 4-1 at a minus 154. Then on Thursday, Bournemouth on the road at St. Mary's at a plus 198 gets the win over Southampton by the score of 1-0. Newcastle put four on Everton at a minus 123. And Spurs and Manchester United, the first match under Ryan Mason, at a plus 277, it was a 2-2 draw. So, how does that lay things out? Well, as you head into the weekend, surprising no one once again, Manchester City, two matches in hand, two points back. They've only given up 29 goals in 31 matches this year. Two matches in hand over Arsenal, two points behind. Newcastle, 62 points. They've won four of five. They are in third. Manchester United, 60 points. They are in fourth. They have have a match in hand against Newcastle. Spurs are in fifth. This is your first Europa spot, 54 points. And they are ahead of Villa on goal difference, plus seven to plus five. Europa Conference League spot right now belongs to Liverpool, who's at 53 points. Brighton is 8th at 49, but they have at least two matches in hand with the three teams that are above them. Brentford's at 47 points. They played 33 games. Fantastic season for Thomas Frank and the Bees at the G-Tech. Fulham, 45 points match in hand. They are in 10th. 
Chelsea, 39 points, have lost four of five. Frank Lampard's going to have the gig to the end of the season. Mauricio Pochettino, I think, can write his own check. 39 points, and this is that group that I guess is now group three. Crystal Palace at 37 points. Great work done by Roy Hodgson. And they are ahead of Wolves on goal difference, minus 11 to minus 15. Bournemouth now in 14th place. They've won three of four. Bournemouth, 10 wins on the season, 36 points, 33 matches played. West Ham's at 34 points, creeping away from that group that is trying to avoid relegation, or that's a part of the discussion. West Ham, 34 points, 32 matches played. Leeds is in 16th. Forrester in 17th, both at 30 points. But Leeds, goal difference is minus 21. Nottingham Forest is minus 31. Your relegation zone. Leicester at 29 points. Everton at 28 points, and they've only scored 25 goals in 33 matches this year. Southampton, they've won 6 of 33. They are at 24 points. They have also lost 4 of 5, and that gets you in to the weekend. So that gets us into all of the sound that we have and the stories of the week. And let's start off with what's going on with Manchester City. Friday, 5 o'clock, end of business. On the East Coast in the United States, everyone is supposed to have their bids in. Here's your update from Kabe Salakal and our friends at Sky Sports. Look, my information is that obviously we know the Qataris will be making uh, another bid for Manchester United. They've been very consistent from day one. They want to buy the club. They want to buy 100% of the club uh, and their bid is going to be debt free. Uh, What I've been told is that their bid is going to be rational. Uh, very rational, I was told. Uh, what does that they, mean? Well, it means that they're not going to dance to the Glazers' tune. I think there's a feeling that this process has been going on for five months now. It didn't need to be this long. We've always known that the Qataris want to buy Manchester United. Sheikh Jassim wants to buy the club. Uh, and there's a feeling, I think, that there have been a, a lot of leaks, a lot of manoeuvring to try and get Sheikh Jassim to pay more. And I think he's not going to do that. He's ignoring all the noise around the other bids. He's focused on his own bid. He'll be putting that bid in. And I think as far as he's concerned, he thinks the Glazers want to uh, sell the club. He thinks they definitely want to sell the club. And he believes that his bid is rational. And it's by far the best bid on the table. Because he's got the money to buy United. Give it to the Glazers. Thank you very much. Good night, Glazers. They can leave with their pot of cash. And he's also got another pile of money ready to be spent on transfers, to be spent on Old Trafford, to be spent on the training ground and to be spent on the infrastructure and the investment in the local area around Old Trafford. He's got all that. It's going to be put on the table in front of the Glazers. And if they don't want to accept it, fine. That's it. He's done his best. All right. Rational. The Glazers want six billion quid. If it's rational, does that mean they're not going to get six billion quid? Look, a lot of people think six billion pounds is an outlandish, incredible figure to pay uh, for a football club, a football club that loses money, a football club that has got debts, thanks to the Glazers, uh, of uh, around one billion pounds. But this is the kind of figure that these big clubs are changing hands for at the moment. Uh, A couple of weeks ago, Washington Commanders, NFL, $6 billion they went for. That is around £5 billion. So I think the Glazers think £6 billion at least is a fair uh, price for one of the most famous sporting institutions in the world. Now, do I think the Qataris are going to offer £6 billion? I'm not sure. I'm not sure they're going to get close enough uh, to that figure to tempt the Glazers. But they are going to put the best bid on the table. That is what I'm being told. David Moyes felt aggrieved last time out when he was uh, going up against uh, Liverpool. The 2-1 loss, he thought that VAR uh, did not act in his behalf. And uh, he had a bit of news, courtesy of our friends at West Ham, their own selves, as they were getting ready for their match against Crystal Palace. Uh, David Moyes did have a bit of an update. Have you heard anything um, from the referee's body? I know you're saying you wanted an apology after the Liverpool game. I just wonder, have you have you received one? I've spoken to the I've spoken to Howard Howard Webb and, and his team. So, yes, I have. Yeah. 
Are you happy to share any more information now? No, no, the conversation was private and uh, that will remain that way. Um, OK, so we're looking ahead to Crystal Palace. I wonder, um, I mean, they've had a good few weeks. I know they lost to Wolves, but um, what have you made of what Roy Hodgson's done over the last few weeks and sort of the turnaround and things there? I didn't know if I thought he was mad when he first came back in, but it's more, I think, Roy's got an incredible passion for the game. So experienced. And I can understand totally why why he's working and why people would want him to work because he's such a good manager and coach. And he's and he's proved it in his in his early early results with Crystal Palace. So I hope that we can uh, hope that we can win the game uh, because it's so important for us. But I have to say that Roy's done a great job since he's went back. I mean, Roy, I, I know you kind of won't want to put a number on it, but I know Roy has said that for him, he won't consider their their safe until they get to that. 40 point mark that's what he's saying is his his magic number what do you make of that as a kind of target well i think everybody targets 40 points i think we all would because we see it in in history maybe being the, a number which gives you probably a uh, total safety so i think roy's right with what he says and i think that we're all got to try and push for that points total whether it reaches that that would be that would be for debate I, i'm guessing we mentioned Leicester. We'll get into the juice boxes coming up in just a little bit, but it is a massive game in the relegation zone. So Dean Smith talking about what the game with Le- with Everton this weekend means, and he's hoping that the King Power can come through. Well, pretty much the same as we handled the, the Leeds game. You know, it's a big game for both teams. Um, you know, with the positions that we're, we're both in in the league uh, and with games running out, obviously. Um, this time we'll have home advantage, and we want to use that to to our, our best advantage as we can. Jamie Vardy was back on the score sheet against Leeds. I, mean, I imagine, like you said about the King Power and the advantage, being an atmosphere he'll thrive off on. Well, what's he been like since you've arrived? Yeah, no, he's been really good. I, you know, I think I said from the, the first moment, he's trained really well, um, got a really good appetite for the game, a great understanding of the game as well. He's engaged in, in meetings we've had and really pleased to see him get his first goal for a while. Um, as I said after the game on on Tuesday night, you know he won the penalty against Wolves. Um, you know uh, didn't get much of a look in against Man City, but after watching Man City against Arsenal, you know three one wasn't a bad result there now, was it? So um, you know he's he's done really well to be fair, and I'm pleased he scored. We mentioned Manchester City, so Manchester City. They've got a matchup against Fulham. We'll go over the juice boxes in a bit, but everybody's sitting there saying, okay, Manchester City, you're two points back. You've got two matches in hand. It's over, right? Not according to Pep, courtesy of Manchester City, their own selves. The people start to say, and I had a feeling, it's over, it's over, it's over, and it's not over. It will be over when it will be over, and it's not over. And still we have seven games. When I saw, for example, the 15, 20 minutes yesterday in Goodison Park, how aggressive they are. A part of the result, how intense and good they, they, they were. And every single game we played for special things for our opponents, for ourselves as well. And all I have to do is do our game. So, and, and I know what happened when we played in Emirates. We won, everyone was happy. Marcelo, Manchester City is already catching Arsenal. We won Nottingham Forest and we draw. Fantastic game, but we draw. Now we won, we have to go to the Fulham. And the stadium is a special stadium with an incredible organized team, a good team. This is the point. So, and we do our job, so we will be closer. But nothing is for granted, and I don't feel absolutely. Uh, we were happy, of course, and satisfied for the last game for the performance we played. But that's all. The day after is okay. Rest and prepare full time is what you have to do, because I know it's not 20 games left. It's seven games, but seven games are seven games. It's a lot. Still had the feeling it's a lot of games, considering we have. Champions League around the corner and 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 so on. Bearing in mind where you're at now in the season, you must have though tremendous trust in your players now to to get the job done. Don't misunderstand me. We were right now third in the position, ten points behind hypothetical leader. I would trust to my players. My players I don't trust, don't trust, it depends on the results. No. So my players is quite similar sometimes to like like all of you, like is we win and the tactics are good, in the win the decisions are bad. So the players are the same. So I have to win them every single day, seduce them every single day, with the decision we make it works, and after to win in the games. But the trust in them 
not depends after seven years together about the results at all. Absolutely not. Because lose is part of the competition. And what is nice, I said, is we are there to try to do it. And of course, we are a good momentum. Uh, everyone except Nathan, but we'll be back soon. Everybody's fit. Everyone wants to play. And uh, the feeling is good, but we have to prove it again. So if we don't get ourselves to Fulham, we'll be in the same position than before Arsenal. We'll be maybe in their hands. In Arsenal's hands. They have to try to avoid it as much as possible. We mentioned uh, Tottenham Hotspur, the draw last time out, the 2-2 draw with uh, Manchester United, match this weekend with Liverpool. From one tough match to another, Ryan Mason, though, is looking forward to the run-in and being in charge. Oh, listen, it's, it's, it's not about me. Um, it wasn't about me. We, we had players on the football pitch that, that were the ones that turned it around. Um, obviously, it's our job as coaches to, to try and help them and, and guide them and make changes to influence games and um, thankfully the boys reacted uh, we had a positive reaction at half time um, it was important that we got the next goal and I, I felt like the momentum was with us for maybe a 20 or 30 minute spell where it was just it was like we, we were getting many chances and um, we created some clear openings so to see the second one going the back of the net was pleasing and then also to, to see it out at the end because I thought the lads put so many so much effort into it from from a physical point of view, but but also emotionally as well. To to stay strong together at the end was was a positive as well. And then that obviously helps massively to try and take it into a game at Anfield as well. Yeah, I think so. Um, but I'll probably reiterate what I just said. We've we've pretty much got no time whatsoever. The game's almost forty eight hours from now. Um, so it's a really really quick turnaround. So we've got to focus on on recovery as much as possible to prepare the game from a tactical point of view and, and also see how the boys have, have reacted from last night. So we mentioned the possibility of new owners and current owners and who's backing them and where the money's coming from. Newcastle situation was has been talked about and it's been a hot topic of conversation ever since the Saudi PIF took charge of Newcastle. Newcastle's in third right now at 62 points. So we had the discussion earlier from what Kaveh Salikal was saying about one of the possible suitors for Manchester United and what could happen there with the Premier League and CEO Richard Masters. So a conversation was had, Beth Moody from Sky, with the CEO of Aston Villa and his thoughts on outside ownership. The details of Newcastle United's ownership continues to raise questions and Aston Villa's chief executive Christian Perslow believes the Premier League should investigate. The club has always insisted that the Saudi Public Investment Fund, which owns a controlling stake, is independent of the Gulf state's royal family. But recent court revelations in the United States have cast doubt on that. Perslow was speaking to Beth Rigby of Sky News. There is a question about whether or not um, the Crown Prince is involved in the actual fund behind Newcastle. It was meant to be uh, separate from yes. the sovereign uh, nation. There's a case in America in which the Saudis are arguing the opposite. Do you think the Premier League basically needs to investigate it? Who really is claiming ownership and the links of the Crown Prince to the... Yes, I do, and I think they are, and they would, if there is a contradiction in representations made at the time of the takeover as to the nature yes. of the relationship between the rulers of that country, the Sovereign Wealth yeah. Fund and Newcastle. Of course, the Premier League, I'm sure, are investigating that. Because they but, won't say publicly if they are or not, but you think they are. I'd be certain they are. But my point, Beth, is, and I don't think this is as well understood, is that even if the Crown Prince himself had stood up on television and said, I am proud that our Sovereign Wealth Fund is buying Newcastle and I'm looking forward to be personally involved because I love football, I love the idea of the Saudi Arabian nation being indirectly involved in English football and I look forward to my first game at St James's Park. There is nothing in the rule book that would have prevented that okay. happening and I don't think people understand that. Now if we were talking about, you know, for example, you know, the leader of North Korea which, is a, which sits yeah. on a, a sanctioned list, then there would be rules to prevent it. But this is what people don't understand. Football is not going to take a line yeah. on those individuals that's at odds with that taken by our elected government. I understand Or that. the I American mean, government or the European and it, government. And it, 
Well, both the Premier League and Newcastle have declined to comment when asked by Sky News if an investigation was underway to determine the ownership structure of the club. When Premier League Chief Executive Richard Masters went before the DCMS Select Committee last month, he was asked about the matter and he had this to say. I cannot really comment on it, even on the point, is the Premier League investigating it? We cannot really comment on it. Obviously, we are completely aware, and you are correct, about the general nature of the undertakings that we received at the point of takeover, but I cannot really go into it at all. The only time when the Premier League comments publicly on regulatory issues is when it is charged and at the end of a process when an independent panel has decided whether any rule breaches have actually taken place and we don't talk about the investigatory process at all. So now, that's your update on the folks that are currently in the Premier League. What about folks who are coming into the Premier League? Sheffield United, the owner has said in no uncertain terms that he wants to sell the club. Prince Abdullah wants to sell Sheffield United because he is tired. He just flat out emotionally exhausted and wrung out. He wants to sell in the next month. We bring back Kaveh Salakal and our friends at Sky Sports News about the saga of Sheffield, Prince Abdullah, and a suitor. I mean, it's been dragging on for five months, but the uh, big development this evening is that Dozy and Bozy, the Nigerian businessman who's trying to buy Sheffield United, is now ready to increase his offer for the club from £115 million to £150 million. And that is, of course, because now they are in the Premier League. Now, he's been trying to buy the club for five months. Uh, discussions with the owner... Prince Abdullah, I've been told, have been sort of hot and cold. Uh, you know, sometimes they get on well, sometimes they don't. In the background as well, uh, he's been checked out by the EFL because he has to pass the owners and directors test as well. But last night, Prince Abdullah spoke to our former colleague, Jim White, and he told Jim White that he believes that he's going to sell the club. He intends to sell the club in the next four weeks. And he was asked, will you be selling it to Dozy and Bozy? And he said, look, I think that is unlikely at the moment. Oh. But today there was a meeting between Dozy and Bozy and the chief executive and chairman of Sheffield United. Uh, and my understanding is that meeting was called to discover two things. One, does Prince Abdullah want to sell the club? And two, does Mbozi want to buy the club? And I've been told the answer to both those questions is yes. So it Looks like the takeover could be back on. Uh, and Bozy has the funds in place to do the deal and he's willing to pay that extra £35 million because, of course, Sheffield United are now back in the Premier League. So that sets us up for the weekend schedule. And it is heavier on Sunday than it is on Saturday because of all of the action in the midweek. So Saturday, 7.30 is your early game. Crystal Palace hosting West Ham. Juice boxers are throwing a blanket over the whole thing. Crystal Palace, West Ham within the margin of error to plus 176. Brentford, a minus 154 at 10 o'clock hosting Nottingham Forest, who's north of plus 460. Brighton at home, an angry Brighton team after what happened last time out, hosting Wolves. They're at a minus 192. Five matches on Sunday. We do have Monday night football, but then once again, you end up with the matches that have to be made up. You've got uh, one on Tuesday two on Wednesday, and another one on Thursday. So Prem and Proper will be back in a week's time. So here we go. On Sunday, Bournemouth hosting Leeds at the Vitality. They are favored currently to plus 160. Leeds at a plus 173. Your draws are plus 252. Manchester City at Craven Cottage, 9 o'clock. So we've had the, uh, I believe we've had the, uh, Time change, the spring forward for England. Manchester City is a minus 400 at Craven Cottage, Fulham almost north of plus 1150. Manchester United, minus 128 at home against Aston Villa. That one's going to be a tough one. Your draws a plus 296. Villa's a plus 346. Newcastle hosting Southampton, and Newcastle is a minus 333. Southampton is basically a plus 970. 1130, your late match on Sunday morning. Liverpool a minus 192. Your draws a plus 388. Spurs are a plus for 78. Monday night football, Leicester and Everton. We mentioned that when you heard from Dean Smith earlier in Prem and Proper. Leicester at home is a plus 102. Your draw is a plus 252. Everton is a plus 287. Now to the matches in the midweek. Tuesday, 
Arsenal hosting Chelsea. They're a minus 152. Chelsea is a plus 412. Wednesday, Liverpool hosting Fulham at a minus 278. Fulham is almost a plus 700 heading to Anfield. And then Manchester City at home hosting West Ham is a minus 435. West Ham is a plus 1150. Not to be outdone Thursday, Brighton hosting Manchester United at a plus 116 at the Amex. Your draw is a plus 277. Manchester United is a plus 217. Then a week from today, we all get to breathe and get set up for everything going on in the matchups in (laughs) Monday Night Football. You got all day long. Saturday, Sunday, Monday, May 6, 7, 8. Full day across the board. Full weekend and a full week once again with everything going on in the Premier League for teams that are in, for teams that want to be in. That is your new round of Prem and Proper. Enjoy your matches on the weekend. It's going to be a busier Sunday than it is a Saturday, but it's going to be a busy week nonetheless. For everybody here at SDH, I'm just John. For Jason, for Jarrett, for Nick, enjoy your matches in the Premier League. We'll catch up with you again next week.